Bonjour. Welcome back, friends. Here we are. We're still in Unit 7, and today we're going to solve rational equations. And we're actually going to use some properties that we've already been um, taught this unit, um, things that we've used in adding and subtracting rationals and maybe even multiplying and dividing rationals too. And definitely going to be using factoring because, you know, that never goes away. So basically, it boils down to two methods to solve rational equations. The first one is going to be probably more easy, uh, a little bit easier for you, which is cross multiplying. And I know you've heard that term before. And then the second method is um, also pretty easy because you're using the least common denominator, which hopefully you recognize as what we just used. Excuse me, what we just used for adding and subtracting our rational equations. So we're going to start off pretty simple. In the first method, cross multiplying, we're going to do just that. So I'm going to multiply on the diagonals. So I'll go here and here. Okay, so when I do the blue diagonal, I'm really getting 3 times 4x plus 5, which we know is 12x plus 15. And then that's going to equal what's on the yellow diagonal. So that's again 9 times x plus 1, which we know is 9x plus 9. At this point, all we need to do is solve this. So I can put all my x's on one side and all my numbers on the other side. And so maybe I subtract 9x from 12x and I get 3x. And then I subtract my 15 from 9 and I get a negative 6. And so dividing by 3, I get x to be negative 2. Okay, this is my final answer. However, we are still going to have to check for extraneous solutions. Um, most of the time, your extraneous solutions are going to be your excluded values. So because we're working with rational equations, there's always going to be a denominator. Um, so let's say, for example, in this problem, we got x to be negative 1. Well, we know that that would have been an extraneous solution because that is an excluded value. That's going to make this fraction 0, um, or the denominator 0, which means the fraction is undefined. Or if we would have gotten like negative 5 over 4 or something like that, okay? So that's cross-multiplying, which like I said, hopefully should be pretty familiar to you. The second method is using your least common denominator. So this is going to be more helpful when you typically see um, two fractions being added or subtracted or two rational equations being added or subtracted and then equal to another um, rational equation. Notice cross multiplying is easier when you just have a rational equaling another rational. So for our least common denominator, that's exactly what I want to find first. And so for this problem, we can see that our least common denominator is going to be 4x. So that means our first fraction gets multiplied by 4 over 4. Our second is going to get multiplied by x over x. And our third is going to get multiplied by 4 over 4. So rewriting that, I get 20 over 4x plus 7x over 4x equals negative 36 over 4x. So as you know, with adding or subtracting um, fractions, once your, common uh, once your denominators are the same, you don't do anything with them. All you're doing is combining your numerators, right? Like terms in your numerators. So because all of our denominators are the same, we are just really going to look at our numerators. So we are just going to be looking at the 20 plus 7x equaling negative 6. And so that's all I need to do. 20 plus 7x is equal to negative 36. So that means 7x is equal to a negative 56, which means x is equal to negative 8. That is not going to be an extraneous solution for us. Um, you could plug it back in and check. Or like I said, you can just look at those denominators and know that it's not an excluded value. I do want to mention also that you can combine these two methods. For example, maybe you just wanted to find the least common denominator on the left-hand side, and then once you simplify that to one fraction, then you can use cross-multiplying, and that's totally fine. Um, for this particular problem, let's say if we did that, we would not be multiplying that one by the 4. So then we would just get the 20 over 4x plus the 7x over 4x. So that's going to give us 20 plus 7x over 4x equaling negative 9 over x. And so when I cross multiply, I would get negative 36x equaling 20x plus 7x squared. So don't be alarmed. You really do have the same problem, but this one is going to require a little bit of factoring. And so I want to work this out because it will give us one of those extraneous solutions to see. And so what I would do here is I would um, 
you can, let's see, you can set it equal to zero. So you can do zero equals 56 X plus seven X squared. And so then you can find a common factor of seven X. So that's zero equals seven X times. Um, I'm gonna rewrite the order. That's gonna be X plus eight. And so then solving for um, X, I would get X to be zero or X to be negative eight. And then as you can see, this would be an extraneous solution because I cannot have zero because there's X's in my denominator. And if I would have plugged in zero for X, then it would have been undefined. But negative eight obviously is still our answer, okay? For me, I think it's just easier to use the like one method for the whole entire problem, but you are more than welcome to kind of blend the two. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some more um, examples. So in example one, we see that we have one fraction, I'm sorry, one rational on the left and then two on the right. So again, I think that using the method of least common denominator is gonna be the easiest. So what I need to do is look at my denominators and see who the least common denominator is. I notice that that x squared minus nine can be factored into x plus three and x minus three and none of the other ones can be factored. So that means my least common denominator is x plus three and x minus three. This left fraction would need to get multiplied by the x plus three over x plus three. The second one doesn't have to get multiplied by anything because it has the common denominator. And then the right one would have to be multiplied by x minus three over x minus three. So rewriting that, I would get six x plus 18 over x plus three x minus three equals 8x squared over x plus 3x minus 3. And then minus, that would be 4x squared minus 12x over x plus 3x minus 3. So again, because all my denominators are the same, all I need to do now is focus on my numerators. So 6x plus 18 is equal to 8x squared minus, remember I'm subtracting this entire like unit, so I need to kind of distribute that negative. So it is gonna be a minus four X squared, but then it's gonna be a positive 12 X. So then you can combine some like terms. And also if you want, you can do kind of two steps in one, you can combine like terms and you can set it equal to zero. So zero is gonna be equal to my eight X squared minus four X squared is four X squared. I do have a 12 X, but I subtracted six X. So that's still a positive six X. And then I subtracted that 18. And so now I wanna look for a GCF because I'm gonna have to solve this. I do have a GCF of two. So technically taking out that GCF and dividing it from both sides still gets me zero equals two X squared plus three X minus nine. And then I wanna factor that. So I'm looking for factors of 18 that add up to three. So factors of 18 that add up to three is gonna be a negative, oops, so it's gonna be a six and a minus three. Yeah, negative 18, sorry, because it's a negative nine, good. So six and negative three. So for me, I need to rewrite to group, factor by grouping, I'll make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so then I would do zero equals two x squared plus six x minus three x minus nine. GCF here is 2x, leaving me with x plus 3. GCF here is negative 3, leaving me with x plus 3. So my factors are 2x minus 3 and x plus 3, still equal to 0. And so solving, I get x to be 3 halves and x to be negative 3. I want to check to see if I have any extraneous solutions, and I do. X cannot be negative 3 because I have an X plus 3 in my denominator, and that would make it 0, making the fraction undefined. So my only answer is X is equal to 3 halves. So like I said, factoring never goes away. Okay, let's do it again. So example two, again, is another one for me that I think using the least common denominator is going to be the easiest, but you're more than welcome to kind of combine the two. I'm seeing X squared minus one can be factored and that's going to be X plus one, X minus one. That's a difference of squares. And so now that I see that my other fraction has a denominator of X minus one, and this technically has a denominator of one, excuse me, my common denominator is that x plus one, x minus one. So this left fraction needs to be multiplied by x plus one over x plus one. The middle fraction needs to be multiplied by both. So x plus one and x minus one, oops. 
sorry, over x plus 1, x minus 1. No, I'm getting sloppy here. Okay, so that's going to be 7x plus 7 over x plus 1, x minus 1. And then minus, that's going to be, so I know that x plus 1 and x minus 1 is actually x squared minus 1. So that's going to be minus 5x squared minus 5 over, you can leave it as x plus 1, x minus 1. And then equal to 6 over x plus 1, x minus 1. So again, using this method, having all three of those rational equations have a common denominator now. Now I can just focus on those numerators. So 7x plus 7 minus 5x squared plus 5 is equal to 6. Set everything equal to 0 and combine like terms. So then that gets me, excuse me, a negative 5x squared plus 7x 7 plus 5 is 12, but then I subtracted the 6 over, so then that's going to be a positive 6 equals 0. I don't like that my leading um, term is a negative, so I'm going to make everything the opposite. So this is actually going to be 0 equals 5x squared minus 7x minus 6. And then again, I want to factor this. So I look out for GCF. There is not one. So because my A value is not 1, I need to multiply my A and my C value. So... 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. I need factors of negative 30 that add up to a negative 7. And so then that's going to be a negative 10 and a positive 3. So I'm going to rewrite so I can factor by grouping. 5x squared minus 10x plus 3x minus 6. GCF here is 5x, leaving me with x minus 2. GCF here is positive 3, leaving me with x minus 2. So my factors are 5x plus 3 and x minus 2. So that means x is equal to negative 3 fifths and x is equal to positive 2. For both of these, they are our answers. Neither one of them is extraneous by looking at our denominators and plugging it back in. So we have two answers for this problem. Okay, so example 3 is almost like a word problem, but not quite. So we want to make sure we understand this problem and what it's asking for, okay? So it says, determine where the function f of x is equal to 2x squared plus x plus 3 over x squared plus 5x minus 10 crosses the horizontal asymptote. So in order to find where it crosses the horizontal asymptote, the first thing we should probably find is what is the horizontal asymptote? So let's go back to graphing rational functions. Finding horizontal asymptote, we compare the degree of the top and the bottom. The degree of the top and the bottom here are the same, so when they are the same, we divide our leading coefficients. So that means our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2, because 2 divided by 1 is 2. So I want to know where this function crosses that horizontal asymptote, because remember, it is possible to cross the horizontal asymptote. So what we can do now is we can set 2 equal to this function because that's where they're going to cross. That's where they're going to intersect. So if I set 2 equal to 2x squared plus x plus 3 over x squared plus 5x minus 10, now I'm solving this rational equation. This is really like 2 over 1. This is a great example of when you can cross multiply. So I'm going to do just that. So I get 2x squared plus x plus 3 equal to, I'm going to do 2 times the denominator. So that would be a 2x squared plus 10x minus, oops, minus 20. So to set everything equal to 0 to solve, my 2x squares are going to cancel out. I get 0 to b. Subtracting the x, I get 9x. Subtracting the 3, I get minus 23. So if I uh, add the 23 to the other side, I get 23 equaling 9x. Divide by 9, I get x to be 23 over 9. So if the question is asking where it's crossing the horizontal asymptote, we know that the x value is 23 over 9 and the y value is 2. Okay. Again, I'm going to make this smaller because you know I write big. <laughs> And I'll just kind of shift it over here. Okay, awesome. So this is actually, oops, this is actually our final answer because it's asking where, okay? And then the last one. 
For this last one, um, this is a great example of factoring in disguise, okay? And the reason I say that is because when we first look at this problem, we might say, oh my God, that looks so hard, I'm overwhelmed. But when we further examine it, we notice that what's inside the parentheses are the exact same thing. And so what I can do here is I can do a substitution for those exact same things. So that 3x minus 1 over 4x, I can actually replace it with another variable. I don't want to use x for two reasons. One, x is already being used in this problem. That's the major reason. But two, if I use x, I might get a little confused in working the problem because I might get to a step that says x equals something, and you might think you're done, but you're really not done. So we do call this u substitution, um, but I sometimes don't like using the letter u because some people's u looks like a four. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna use another variable and it doesn't matter what variable you use as long, like I said, as it's not x or whatever variable is being used in the problem. So I'm gonna use an h. So if I replace, or if I set h equal to the 3x minus 1 over 4x, now I can do my substitution. So this is actually 2h squared minus h minus 6 equals 0, factoring in disguise, because this is a simple quadratic that you can factor. And so let's factor it. Again, your a value is not 1, so I like to do um, factoring by grouping, so I'm going to multiply my a value times my c value, so 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, so I need factors of negative 12 that are going to add up to a negative 1, so that's going to be a negative 4 and a positive 3. And so I can rewrite this as 2h squared minus 4h plus 3h minus 6 equals 0. Take out the GCF of the first two and the last two, so that'll be 2h times h minus 2, plus 3 times h minus 2 equals 0. So 2h plus 3 and h minus 2 equals 0. So that means h is equal to negative 3 halves and h is equal to 2. We are not finished yet. And here's, like I said, the second reason why you don't want to use an x. Because if you would have used x and you would have gotten to this point, you would have thought, oh, I'm done. I just solved for x but that's not the case. You just solve for h. What is h equal to? So now we're gonna take this, oops, what h is equal to, and where we're gonna replace it here and here. Let me change these colors so they all match. Okay, so if I do that, then I can do h, which is three x minus one over four x, is equal to negative three over two, and h, three x minus one over four x, is equal to two. Well, two is really over one. And again, this is a great example of using just cross multiplication. So here I could do something like boom, 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 boom. That's gonna get me six X minus two equals negative 12 X, excuse me. So that's gonna give me 18 X equals two. So that's gonna give me two over 18, which reduces to one ninth. And then this problem is gonna be three X minus one equals eight X. And so that's gonna give me negative one equals five X. So that means X is equal to a negative one fifth. And both of those are my answers. They are not extraneous because if I look at what is in the denominator, neither, uh, neither one of those would make it zero, which would make it undefined. So that's it, that's my final answer. So. Just kind of be on the lookout for something that looks like this. And I mean, what's in yellow could be really anything, but as long as they match, that might be a good idea for you to think about using substitution and then just factoring instead of worrying about expanding that and then distributing and then all that. Because you could do it without factoring. You could expand this out. You could distribute the two. You could distribute the negative and do all the fun things. Um, make this a common denominator of 4x by multiplying by 4x over 4x, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it might be a little bit more challenging rather than just factoring. And again, that's why factoring skills are so important. All right, my friends, talk to you later. Bye-bye.